continuing our coverage the astonishing story of the firing of FBI Director James Comey. As the nation has reacted to this unusual event, uh, we have learned a new name, many of us. Uh, the name Rod Rosenstein has come to the attention of the American people in a way it never has before. Here to talk to us about the role of this Justice Department official in the drama to date and potentially in the drama as it transpires in the future is Ken Good. Ken is a senior fellow with the national security team at the Center for American Progress. He's been tracking this story and writing about it, and he joins us now. Ken, thanks for coming on the program. Glad to be here. Thanks for having me on. Oh, absolutely. And tell us a little bit about uh, Rod Rosenstein. He is the person who uh, wrote the memo. Uh, that's where I think most people first saw his name. The, the White House used uh, the memo from Rosenstein to uh, justify uh, James Comey's firing. Uh, but even that is controversial. Uh, uh, tell us a little bit about Rosenstein and how he got to be a celebrity. He is now the deputy attorney general. He has been for just a little bit more than two weeks. Prior to that, he was the longtime U.S. attorney for Maryland, having first been appointed by President George W. Bush and carried over for eight years by President Obama. And he had a, a long uh, a career in the, in the DOJ uh, prior to that. And he earned a reputation during that career as a real straight shooting prosecutor. And he was uh, uh, first nominated by a Republican, but won the approval of not only the Obama administration, but the two Democratic senators from Maryland strongly recommended him to the Obama administration to keep his job. And when he was nominated for to be deputy AG by the Trump administration, many looked to him and looked to that background as someone who could be a bulwark of independence in the Trump DOJ. And it was the, basically the theme of his confirmation hearing. And he was confirmed by an incredibly wide margin, 94 to six was the vote uh, in the Senate in late April. And so he came into this job with, with a, a great reputation and Kind of remarkably, in the span of just a couple short weeks, the the tide has turned so dramatically that his reputation uh, is is really in the gutter <laughs> after how he was so blatantly used uh, as justification and a pretext uh, to give the White House a reason to fire the FBI director. Yeah, and, and and as I understand it, Ken, the story, and, and, and I should say, by the way, I don't know if it's pronounced Rosenstein or Rosenstein, but uh, the story, as I understand it, is, is that uh, he was asked to write a memo sort of delineating an argument uh, against Comey and, uh, you know, serving in, in an advisory capacity. He wrote a memo explaining you know, the concerns and the controversies around uh, Comey's uh, pre-election comments and so on. And all of a sudden, he's being touted by the White House as the guy who decided it would be a good idea, as if somehow this was his idea. And, and this is my understanding, but you've been following the story closer. Have I got it more or less right? Well, here's what we know for sure. We know very clear that he wrote this memo. It's a three-page memo that outlines the errors and misconduct that Comey uh, made during the handling of the Clinton email investigation from his public statements in July all the way through to the letter that he sent to, uh, just before the election. And it details uh, both Rosenstein's concerns about those and it lists a, a large number of former DOJ officials who share his concerns. Um, and that was cited and he wrote that memo and it was dated on Tuesday. Uh, that was the day that the president fired Jim Comey. In the initial rollout of this from the White House, Rosenstein's memo was cited as the rationale, the recommendation, the driving force with his initiative to fire Comey. Now, in the roughly 48 hours that we've had since that 
uh, first announcement, we've had a number of shifting stories about what the timeline was, whose idea it was, and how it all came about. Uh, so now what we're seeing is that we heard yesterday from the White House uh, Deputy Press Secretary that the president had been considering firing Comey from the day he got elected. Uh, we heard that his concerns had lost confidence over the time in, in office. We heard Trump himself yesterday say that he fired Comey because he was, quote, not doing a good job. Uh, and we now actually just today, uh, the president in an interview that will air later tonight on NBC News says that he was going to fire Comey anyway, regardless what the DOJ said uh, in this memo. So we've gone uh, all the way from Rosenstein's memo outlining the way Comey handled the Clinton email investigation being the reason why they fired Comey to now Trump saying I was going to fire him anyway. And of course, this has happened and transpired all in the manner of just 48 hours. Yeah, so and I should explain. The stories are ridiculous. Yeah. Yeah, it is ridiculous. And I should explain it again. We're talking with, with Ken Good, a senior fellow, Center for American Progress. Uh, I, for those who are listening this weekend, that we are recording this interview on a Thursday, and and God knows how many other stories we'll have in the intervening 36 hours. But the fact is, yeah, Ab, it's it, here's what it seems to me, and I'm asking you to speculate, which you are free to refuse to do. But here's what it seems to me: whatever you know, the underlying motives were for this firing, and uh, certainly the timing with uh, asking for more money for the Russia investigation is intriguing to say the least. But whatever the reasoning. Uh, we're looking at a situation where um, it seems as if they thought they might have thought they could uh, make this look like a concession to Democrats and to Hillary Clinton by saying uh, and they could get away with that, that they were going to float that hero. Well, this, this neutral guy everybody likes says he didn't handle the Hillary thing. Well, I'll look like a generous president. You know, I don't let anybody uh, interfere with even my, my political opponents. When people obviously weren't buying that, he started throwing out a million different stories, including that he wasn't good at his job, which is something that basically a lot of us have been frustrated with Comey at different times, but nobody has asserted he's not a competent, to my knowledge, that he's not a competent administrator of the, uh, at the FBI. So uh, basically, they're just it seems like they're just throwing everything at the wall and seeing what sticks. But it seems that at least at one point, they even thought they, they might have placated Democrats with this. Yeah, you know, the thinking that's going on inside the White House is very much amateur hour. Uh, and I think that is been exposed dramatically in this episode that you know, it seems to shift direction every couple of hours. But the bottom line is with all of what, whatever this smokescreen is that they're throwing up today or will they throw up in the next couple of days, the president of the United States fired the FBI director who was leading the investigation targeting him and his campaign and his associates for possible collusion with Russia in the hack of the U.S. election in 2016. And everything else is just a distraction. And it is beyond, it is just impossible to believe that this president would fire Jim Comey for mishandling the Clinton email investigation, especially the letter that he sent to Congress right before the election. That was something that Trump praised Comey for at the time and said it saved his reputation with him doing that. So the notion that that would all of a sudden become the reason why he was fired is just, it just defies credulity. So here we are left with an investigation on Russia and the White House and Trump and his associates that seems to be gathering steam. We've learned of grand jury subpoenas. We've learned that the scope of the investigation has widened to ex include Trump's financial ties to Russia. We, we've heard that the, Comey had made a request for more resources, for more prosecutors, for more staff in this investigation. We've, we've learned that the Senate Intelligence Committee uh, has also issued its own subpoenas and is also working with the Treasury for its, in its Financial Crimes Division. And this is a rapidly accelerating investigation. And it is 
that reason that I think, and I think many people in town here think in Washington, believe that was the real motivation for the president to fire Jim Comey. And it's not just speculation. There's been an enormous amount of reporting on that over the course of the last couple of days that has included information coming from both the White House and the FBI that says the president grew angry at Comey over his handling of the Russia investigation, how he wouldn't publicly exonerate him, how he uh, would continue to push to widen the investigation, and how Comey himself believes that the Russia investigation was at least one of the motivations for his firing. And the FBI is growing very concerned, very concerned that the White House is trying to interfere with its investigation. And so whatever else we hear from the White House, the reality is the president fired the guy who was leading an investigation, targeting him and his administration and his associates. And that's everything else is just noise. Well, yeah, and I mean, even if he fired him because he doesn't like his ties, uh, which, by the way, for Trump is not impossible, um, <laughs> the timing is just insane, and, given the Russia investigation, and, and there's no way around that. You'd have to be a lunatic to do it, but of course, you know, I won't finish that sentence. Uh, so let's talk, uh, let, let's close with uh, Rod uh, Rosenstein and the man of the hour, as it were. Uh, so this is a guy who came in with a great reputation, suddenly found himself in this, uh, in the midst of this impossible situation and, and being blamed for it. Uh, you wrote a piece on Wednesday, and again, we're recording on Thursday, but uh, Rosenstein's or Rosenstein's reputation <clears throat> now rests on his appointment of a special counsel in Russia investigation. In other words, uh, if I'm this, if I'm Rod Rosenstein, I sure want to uh, restore my reputation after all of this. Um, and it is also what the country needs at this point, uh, urgently needed, that uh, um, it, 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 to get to the bottom of this story once and for all, find out what uh, what did or didn't happen there. Uh, we need that investigation. Is 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 Rosenstein in a position to uh, appoint a special counsel? And if so, shouldn't he just go ahead and do that pronto? He is in that position, and he's in that position uh, because the Attorney General Jeff Sessions has recused himself from all matters related to the Russia inquiry. And then his his uh, authorities then pass to the deputy AG, and the deputy AG now can appoint a special counsel or special prosecutor to, to lead the investigation outside of the formal channels of the Justice Department that removes it from the potential political interference that we've seen over the course of the last couple of days. So I believe very strongly that not only can he do it, he should do it and he must do it. And interestingly, and in, in one of the things that he concluded with in his memo outlining the case for firing Jim Comey is that as long as Comey was in charge of the FBI, that we, we couldn't have a situation where the public and uh, had regained its trust and confidence in the independence and the competence of the Justice Department. Now, he has created, through his role in this, firing of Jim Comey, that very same situation where the public mm -hmm. has lost confidence in the independence of this Justice Department. And the best way to, re to return and restore that confidence is to appoint a special counsel that is independent and outside of the, uh, the, the Justice Department and can be free from the kind of political interference that we, we know the Trump administration and the Trump White House uh, love to exert. So he, sh he can do it and he should do it. And I'm very hopeful that in the coming days we will see uh, a special counsel appointed. And it is exactly what the country needs right now. So he can also do the right thing by his country. So, okay, Rod Rosenstein, in the unlikely event that you're listening to this program, first of all, if I've mispronounced your name, I apologize. Secondly, you know what you need to do. And, and Ken Good, senior fellow with the Center for American Progress, thanks so much for coming on the show and talking about this. Thanks for having me. Glad to do it.